85% of people comfort eat due to a negative body image. Is an obsession with scales and mirrors keeping you fat? I'm going to show you how to stop that. So why would scales and mirrors make us fat? Why would magazines and television programs make us fat? Well, a lot of studies have shown that in countries where they had no television, in tribes where they didn't have mirrors and they certainly didn't have scales, they had no incidence of dieting, didn't know what anorexia was, didn't know what bulimia was. In fact, I was in Zimbabwe some years ago and my guy took me to one side and asked me in a very puzzled way, is it really true that people in your country have food and they willingly starve themselves? I said, yes. He looked even more confused. Is it true that women in your country eat food and then make themselves sick? And I felt very ashamed to say yes. And he said, why? He could not understand how somebody would have a plate of food and starve themselves from eating or eat it and bring it all up because in that country they have enough food. So you see, if we went back in time and we spoke to our great grandparents, they didn't understand this preoccupation with thin, with scales, with getting weighed, with looking in the mirror, with measuring us. They had no idea what the thigh gap was or a bikini bridge. And that wasn't even attractive. They didn't have the A4 challenge where your waist had to be the size of an A4 piece of paper. So what magazines do, what the media does, is it gives us an unrealistic view of the world. It's what I call being overexposed to fake, false images of perfection. We see someone who's thin and think, I need to look like that. We see people who've had a baby and a week later they've got a six pack and their bodies are perfect. And it's not real. It's photoshopped and it's fake we begin to see that that's what I should look like. The only way I can look like that is to eat less. And the only way I know it's working is to get on the scales or look in the mirror and I allow the scales and the mirror to tell me if I'm succeeding or failing. And I really do believe that scales make you fat and that you shouldn't get on a scale. And sure, you can look in a mirror, but you shouldn't judge yourself by the numbers on the scales or even the numbers in your clothing, because it doesn't matter. It's not important. What's important is to recognize that you came onto the planet as a baby. When you're in the womb, it was like being in the Hilton Hotel, you got room service 24 hours a day, and you didn't overeat. You took whatever you needed and stopped. Babies take what they want and stop. When they've had enough, it's very hard to force feed a baby because they bring it all up. Toddlers would rather play than eat, and they leave food. Every birthday party I had for my small daughter, kids would run and go, oh, cake, cake, birthday cake, and they'd clamor for a slice. I'd hand it all out, they'd take three bites, and they'd go and play. And at every birthday party, I'd go around at the end with a black rubbish sack, and I'd tip in paper plates of half a sandwich, some potato chips, some cookies, the cake, because they didn't finish anything, because they didn't have this belief. It's bad to leave food. It's naughty to leave food. This, I shouldn't eat this food. This food is naughty, so let me binge on it. So what happened is you were born with a perfectly normal, healthy relationship with food. You took what you needed, you left. We didn't think, oh my God, I ate an extra cookie. I'm going to have to run around the playground, punish myself, deprive myself, punish my body. You didn't do that. You weren't at war with yourself and you weren't at war with food. You learned to do that when people said, this is a reward, this is a treat, this is something yummy for being good, or you can't have that treat because you haven't been good, or you've had a bad day, here's ice cream, you did well in your exams, here's a McDonald's, let me take you out for a treat and give you chocolate and candy. All of this is learned behavior. The very good news is you can unlearn it. Many years ago, there was a study that showed you that when television was piped into Fiji, within four years, there was an epidemic of dieting, 
And suddenly these new illnesses called anorexia and bulimia appeared out of nowhere. Exactly the same things happened in Turkish villages where girls ate normally, were perfectly happy with their bodies and didn't know anything else except the shape they were and they weren't comparing. Then they too got television piped in and they were watching things like Friends and Baywatch. And now we have Love Island. And we look at people who just look perfect. They're wearing bikinis, they have tiny waist, flat stomach, perfect skin, and they appear to eat normally. And we think, well, why don't I look like that? There's something wrong with me. And then we start to punish our bodies. We go to war with ourselves. We make food the enemy. I'm at war now. I don't like my body. I'm going to force it to change, make it change, punish it, starve it, deprive it, take it to the gym because I want to be tiny. And it is not normal. It's not natural. It's not healthy. And you don't have to be like that. You know, funny enough, having been a therapist for over 30 years, when I ask men what they love about their wives, they say this. What I find really sexy is a bit of flesh that's just on top of the stocking. I love the way her waist goes in and out. I love the curve of her stomach. One of my clients said, when I saw my wife, she's walking down the street and her thighs are rubbing together. It was the sexiest thing I'd ever seen in my life. I knew I was gonna marry that girl. He hadn't even seen her from the front but these thighs rubbing together, he found very, very erotic. Another of my clients said, you know, getting into bed with my wife, it's like getting into bed with a bag of antlers. She's now skin and bone. It's so unattractive. I have to put a towel on her when we have sex because her hip bone's great. And so that was interesting that men don't find angular women attractive. They like curves. They like the curve that goes here and they like the curve of the waist and they like thighs. They don't really love a thigh gap. They don't, they're not interested in a bikini bridge or your waist fitting into an A4 challenge. It's a myth that you are sold. You're sold this myth that thin is better, that skinny is better. And so many models that I meet, so I had to starve myself starve myself to be on that Victoria's Secret catwalk, starve myself to be on the cover of a magazine. I had to dehydrate myself before a shoot by not even drinking water. And when I stopped modeling and I allowed myself to eat, it was such a relief because I felt so judged and people would look at me. And I had to be the role model for many, many teenage girls who admired me, had no idea I was living on appetite suppressants. One of my clients said, I used to drink 15 cans of Diet Coke a day. I didn't eat. I thought I looked amazing. So my brother said, you look ill. You look terrible. That is not attractive. I still didn't get it. And now, all these years later, I can't get pregnant. My ovaries never fully developed because I didn't eat. And the price I've paid for that thin- thinness is infertility. And now so I would, I'd have stretch marks from my neck to my ankles if I could just have a baby. I wouldn't care if I was fat. I have paid the highest price you can imagine because I'm infertile, because I starve my body. And that is so sad, so painful, so terrible. I see so many women in their 40s and 50s now who are getting things like osteoporosis and all kinds of other illnesses because they went back to starving themselves in their teens to look like a model in a magazine who actually didn't even look like that. Those pictures are airbrushed and photoshopped and they don't look like that at all. And if they do, they're a freak of nature. It's not normal. So remember, you were not born this way fighting your body, judging yourself, comparing yourself. In fact, you were born quite the opposite. And you can get back a healthy, loving relationship with your body and with yourself. You can get over all of that conditioning that comes from the media. Click the link below. Look at my perfect weight forever and learn how to love your body, love yourself. And when you love your body, you know what happens? 
it loves you right back. And that's a wonderful thing.